Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's Friday the 28th of April. We've just taken some cattle out. We've been cutting cattle all week to try and get them all, all out. So we've got a few more loads yet to do. We've got Since putting those new filters in, this tractor runs sweet as a nut now. Sweet as a nut. It's uh, really improved the performance. We just need to give it a good clean off. Won't let me get five minutes when we're back in the yard. There's a massive fent working over there, massive control work. Some sort of machine, huge bloody thing. But yeah, we've got to work on getting down there. So head on down to Marshes, take this load in traffic. There's our Marshes there on the right, the new ones we bought. I was thinking the other day, we need to clean those dikes out in there before long. Have a Hitachi and have a go at some point cleaning them out. It's a job we're going to do in the winter time and it's a job which gets done every couple of years, taking out the dikes, clearing them out. Welcome to rush hour, cutting cattle. The area where we're going to drop these cattle off. Here's the golf course we go past and they've had their lawnmower out. It's, it's nice to finally see some lawns being cut and it's sort of, you know, a sign that summer's just around the corner, we're into spring, the cherry blossom's out. It's just a lovely thing to see this time of the year. These speed bumps always get me, gotta slow up for them. Oh, of course we've also got the cattle on the back as well to think about, so we've got to go nice and steady. But yeah, finally, the weather's turned. It's wet down here, so I can't really drive on the marshes that much, but they will dry up in the next, well, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks. It's just about dry enough for the cattle, but not really much else. Well, I'm a bit annoyed we made a mess, but the weather is turning and this is the drop-off field and then we've got the, the main marshes through there, so it is what it is. I'll chain harrow this in the summer if it's really bad, but... Down there, but I've, someone's left the Defender in the way, so I've got to move this out of the way to then get the tractor out and we can head off home Friday evening. Might have a Chinese tonight, I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll have a Chinese. Get on home, push on. Now we're getting the cattle out and uh, it'll be another, another few days. We're getting on for next week until we get all of them out. Then we'll be heading on towards making some silage, cutting that grass. But we, we need a mower first before we can cut it. So I've got to make my mind up on which one we want. So, which mower, so back to the farm. Mainly the time I get to drive the 6R, mostly through winter, I'm driving the Telehander with the cattle feeding. I'm hoping next winter that I, get, I could do some jobs with the 6R in the winter, which would be like nice to be in the cab, doing some hedge cutting or doing something you know, where you're doing maintenance, something like that. So I think a hedge cutter would be good if I wanted to do some winter tractor work. But mostly in the winter, I don't really drive the tractor that much. I'm mainly carting muck, and that's about it in the winter, because there's not as much work to do. Whereas obviously spring and summer, more or less in the tractor, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and find some more jobs for the winter. It'll be quite good. Um, you see, we're clocking up 55K now. It clocks a nice speed, this, ever since I changed from miles per hour to kilometers an hour. And they do say if you pop the bigger tires on the back, they will do up to 60K, which is crazy. So 55K, plenty of speed, plenty fast enough. We've got air brakes as well. It's a real luxury compared to my old tractor, the 6300 we used to have, which only used to do about 30 um, It's a lovely evening. We've been doing the cattle today and also been trying to repair the tanker, get that finished. It's really, really difficult to finish because all the welds have got to be perfect to make it watertight, otherwise it seeps out. If you have a look around here, everything is starting to green up. Here where we are in rural South Norfolk, we don't get enough rain, that's the only problem. I was thinking about it today to get enough silage. Here's Claver. had Claver since I was about 14. She's now 12, coming up 13. She's coming up 13, aren't you? You're doing really, really well. Sp Spaniels don't live that long, but Claver does uh, tickle along. She's got some sort of arthritis thing. I've spoken to the vet about it, but she keeps ticking along, you know. That's, that's all you can do, really, in life. Just keep pushing along, keep on going. Clave? So, yeah, she is getting on a little bit, bless her. Come on, girl. This is the fodder beak which we need to feed the cows in the winter, which is 
what you'll see me on all the time is the feeder bucket and that's obviously what feeds the animals feeds the cattle and keeps them going some people have asked why don't you uh, grow like maize the only issue with maize around where we live is it's too dry so yes you could irrigate it if you really tried but you need something which gets down in the soil with a good taproot particularly root crops like fodder beet or sugar beet and they will be able to withstand the drought we get in this part of the world because we don't have very much rain here it's only like I say on average uh, 650 millimeters a year in Norwich at the moment and it's just not enough rain to water the crops so we've got to get a, a, a drought resistant crop in which fodder beet works quite well and some farmers particularly around the southeast, are noticing this now and they're starting to use fodder beet on their farms to feed their cattle and to feed livestock. Dad's always been a firm believer of fodder beet. He's a proper old school farmer. Like I say, he doesn't come on camera, but he is a very traditional old school farmer. And he said back in the day, it's, it's what he used to feed all the time back in the day. And it's a cost effective crop. It's relatively cheap to grow in comparison with other feed crops. And it does work really well, especially on our light free draining soil. One thing I've got to say about the fodder beet this year is that it looks to be to have been drilled really well if you saw the 6430 plant in this they used a gps system which the previous contractor never used and i must say the rows are bang on you can see where the tram lines have been placed i'm sure they're going to be bang on as well and it's just a little bit more advanced more efficient a contractor who's, who's done a nice job of this so we'll see how it comes along we'll hope for a good year with plenty of sun we'll get we won't get enough rain but the the fodder beat will have to cope with the drought that's why we plant it. I'm just going to order some rope bangers from Portex. Just been trying this radio here today with our farm staff and it works really, really well. Vestis, I'll put a link in the description down below. Been trying them out and I'll let you know what you think, what I think of them in the next video. So I want to see how this crop comes along. It's, you know, it's going to take a little bit of while before it germinates. One issue is going to be the pigeons. I'm going to order some rope bangers from Portex. If anyone knows where I can get some cheap rope bangers, do let me know. I've got a gas gun as well, which is temperamental. It works when it wants to work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to try some of those short fuse rope bangers you just drop them in the field like the fuse and it'll hopefully scare off the pigeons and the rooks because they're a real issue on this farm cart some more cattle over the weekend we've got some glorious weather for a change which makes a huge difference and um, of course we've had such a you know winter is such a long old slog and it's very overcast wet and miserable and um, but it does make it quite nice when it when the sun does come out of course in springtime we're now heading towards summer so looking forward to some good weather and from clover and i in southeast norfolk here we will catch you on the next one Click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.